Guess what this show is about? Windows. You know, every once in a while a word gets stolen from the English language, and from that point onward, it takes on a totally different meaning. Say the word Windows to a guy with one geek gene in him, and he thinks you're talking about Microsoft Windows. Today, we'll show you a sneak preview of Windows 95. Plus, we'll look at the competition, the new Warp OS 2 from IBM and System 7.5 for the Apple Macintosh. Windows 95 and more on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard, working with industry leaders to ensure compatibility across the board and across the network. HP PCs, you're looking at partnership in a whole new light. The Computer Chronicles is also made possible by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. With me today is Paul Schindler, Northern California editor of Windows Magazine. Paul, we're talking about Windows 95 today, the new version of Windows. It's hard to believe it's actually, in 95, going to be the 10th anniversary of the introduction of Windows. It came out in 85, right? That's correct. And it took a long time to catch on. Now, there was Windows 1 and 85. This is Windows 2 from 1987, the MS-DOS executive. That's so the way Windows you got into 2, it. Windows 2, yeah. Uh, 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 clearly, a version that presages Windows 3, a lot of the same applications, paint and clock and notepad, but, but cruder, less adjustable, and uh, uh, slower. All in all, it, it just wasn't quite the uh, the revolutionary application that Windows became with version 3 in 1990. Well, that's the question I have for you. Windows is so hot now. I mean, it is the platform around the world. Yet when it first came out in 85, it took five years before anybody paid attention to it. Why? Well, there were two problems. First of all, there's a psychological problem. There was a feeling that real men don't use mice. <laughs> And that, that stood in the way of the graphical user interface on the PC side. But more importantly, Microsoft was on the cutting edge. They were pushing the capabilities of a 286 with yeah. Windows 1 and 2. And the machines, the platform simply wasn't sufficient to support what they wanted to do. When 386s became common in the early 1990s, finally there was a platform that provided Windows the space and the speed it needed to become a reasonable performer. So you needed the CPU, you needed the RAM? Absolutely. Yeah. So it wasn't only the software problem, partly was waiting for the hardware to catch up. That's correct. Okay, today we'll show you some of the features of the newest version of Windows. It's been getting rave reviews, and you'll get to see why. Before we show you Win95, let's take a look at the interface Windows is always compared to, and that's the Macintosh, of course. The newest version of the Mac OS is System 7.5. Without the Macintosh, black and white desktop publishing of Cupertino, California would be hard pressed to meet its deadlines. The Mac is still the favorite of graphic artists, and the simplicity and uniformity of the interface has a lot to do with its popularity. The Mac's desktop has changed little over the years, but System 7.5 may change that. The first thing you notice is the screen. <laughs> the nice little stuff that you can pick with the screen. And uh, from then on, you start playing around with stuff. Um, you know, like one thing that's the most used will be the, you know, dragging to the printer because that's, you know, a nice fast thing. You don't have to actually open it up. You can just drag it over to it, you know, so, because um, it takes time to open up programs. And then, um, and then dragging illustrations and text from one program to another. While the interface looks familiar, users will notice new features in System 7.5. The drag and drop capability allows you to copy a selection directly from one file to another simply by dragging it. And with 7.5's new printing architecture, you can print a document by dragging it onto a printer icon. Apple has also added refinements to some well-known screen metaphors. Windows can now be rolled up into window shades to conserve screen space. A new desktop item is the sticky, a virtual reminder note in bright colors that can be placed in obvious spots around the screen. And if you still need help getting around the system, the new Apple Guide will do everything but hold your hand. You just go up into the little question mark area and then you just, it just opens up and you search through what your problem is by different categories. So, you know, if it's fonts or whatever. So you go into that area and it gives you another category so you can get more specific with what you're looking for. And then you click on that and it opens up and it tells you step by step, you know, you just click from page to page. It tells you what to do and then it highlights exactly where you're supposed to go. 
It's no secret that the Mac's GUI interface was years ahead of its time, but Apple knows it cannot sit still, especially with Windows 95 on the horizon. And experienced Mac users seem positive about the latest improvements. I'd say it's definitely in the right direction because, um, I mean, sometimes as users we don't really know what are like system things and what are program things, right? You know, so as far as the system part goes, it's going in the right direction. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Now let's see what the folks at Microsoft have done to improve on Windows 3.1. Here to show us Windows 95 is Brent Ethington of Microsoft. All right, a lot of new things in Windows 95. You've replaced File Manager, you've replaced Program Manager, you've done away with the eight character limitation on file names. Show us how you use Windows 95 now. Okay, Windows 95 revolves around the Start button. The Start button provides a consolidation of Program Manager, for example, to allow me to easily launch Program by simply selecting the program. So you launch right. things out of start now. Exactly. The start button is um, always visible on the screen even when I maximize programs. All right, so this is WordPad. This is the, the right notepad combination that now comes with Windows? Correct. It's a replacement that's in new Windows 95. Okay. I can also start documents by selecting documents from my document menu on the start, start button. So you launched a document, it automatically launched the application the document needed to come exactly. up. Exactly. So this is Paint program now? This is Paint, and um, what I can do is I can easily move between documents through the Windows taskbar, which by simply clicking on the button of the window, which is um, open here on the bottom. Okay, so the bottom thing, the taskbar, gives you a button for every Alive application currently running in Windows. Exactly. So to be able to move information from one document to another, I simply select the information that I want to move, select copy from my edit menu, go to um, the other application, and simply click on paste. So you get a cut and paste between two different programs running at the same time. Exactly, very easy. Okay, what is my computer? That's that icon up in the left there. My computer gets me access to uh, resources on my computer like printers or information. So for example, I can see files on my computer or here I have um, documents that are in a folder on my computer. What you see are icons representing mm -hmm. um, the documents and you also see long file names. So I can easily, by simply clicking on the document I want, type in a long file name to replace the cryptic 8.3 yeah, name. So they're really hot alive areas, you can actually go in there and type inside. Them. Correct, up to 255 characters right, What else can you name. do with my computer? What I can also do is, for example, access to uh, my printers, I can take information and put it on the desktop if I want by simply clicking and dragging and dropping it on the desktop. So that now gives you a place to actually use the printer. I mean that's a hot button too basically, the printer, the printer icon there? Exactly, by double clicking on the shortcut for the printer I can see the documents that are sitting in my print queue. What I can also do is, let me go ahead and start up the replacement really for file manager called Windows Explorer. And let me go back to the same um, folder. And I can also print by simply clicking a document that I want, dragging it, and dropping it on the printer. It's as easy as that. All right, so this is Windows Explorer, which replaces file manager. Correct. What, we all, what we've done is provided different views for information on um, the computer mm -hmm. and we also have um, capabilities for power users, for example, using the right mouse, mouse button to access context information like Quick View, which allows me to see the contents of a file without mm -hmm. opening the application. All right, another thing new in Windows 95 is network capability built in. Show me that. Network Neighborhood gives me access to um, information on my network, which includes Novell Netware servers, Windows NT servers, and also the Internet. By um, using the remote access capability in Windows 95, I can also dial up to the internet directly and access any internet provider that I want. So, internet access software built in, built in, in addition to the rest of the network stuff. Exactly. All right, now while we're talking about network, you've got Microsoft Exchange, and that's the sort of universal inbox so that all kinds of electronic communications shows up in one common inbox? Exactly. Microsoft Exchange, and let me go back to um, the Start button and open up my inbox, allows me to send faxes, send information on the Microsoft Mail server, or actually access mail on the internet. We also use rich text capability to really make impactful messages that I can send to other Windows 95 users or send to other users, for example, on the information mm -hmm. highway. 
All right, what is autoplay? That's an easy way now to, to, to use multimedia? Multimedia in Windows 95 has never been easier. Through autoplay, all I have to do is take the CD-ROM that has an autoplay enabled application, put it in the CD-ROM, close it, and even a four-year-old can now use multimedia. And what will happen is the application will automatically start, and all the user has to do is simply click so on it. So Windows button. automatically detects you've just inserted a CD-ROM and figures, well, I guess he wanted to launch it, so it yep. launches it. And it'll do that, or it may help the user configure the application. Uh -huh. All right, another thing, there's no DOS now sitting underneath the new Windows 95. Right. What happens to my old DOS applications that I still want to use? Old DOS applications can still run in Windows 95 just as they do today under MS-DOS, but they also have new capabilities, so I can access them from my Start button and launch directly. You can also use existing MS-DOS based device drivers as well. Okay, so this is a game which happens to normally run under DOS, but without going out to DOS, I can just launch this directly. Exactly. And can I, can I run a DOS app in a window inside yep. Windows 95? I can even run it within a window. Okay, pretty cool. Windows 95, thanks a lot. All right, now just as sure as night follows day, when Microsoft comes out with a new version of its operating system, Peter Norton is usually right behind with a new upgrade of the Norton Utilities program. Here to show us the new Norton Utilities for Windows 95 is Enrique Salem of Symantec. All right, every time Microsoft comes out with one of these things, you guys jump up real quick and say, we've got some things that isn't inside Windows that every user ought to have. What do you have in the new Norton? Okay. The utilities are specifically designed and architected for Windows 95. They're full 32-bit programs that take advantage of the multitasking and multi-threading capabilities of Windows 95. Prior to installing Windows 95, there's a couple things that a user should do. Um, these utilities that you'll be seeing are actually the Win32 versions. We also ship the DOS versions with the product. All right, so you're saying this Norton Utilities is good to run with Windows 95, but you should also run it before you install Windows 95. Absolutely. All right, to do what? Okay, the first thing that a user should do is run NDIAGS to test their hardware. It does a comprehensive hardware test that checks things like IRQ conflicts and memory errors. The second step that you want to do is run the Norton Disk Doctor to make sure you, that your hard disk is free from errors. Let's take a quick look here at the Norton Disk Doctor. Some of the options that we've built in are the backgrounding capability. This takes advantage of the multitasking capabilities of Windows 95 and is always running in the background to make sure that your hard drive is always clean. The next step is Space Wizard, a brand new piece of the utilities. What Space Wizard does is over time people tend to accumulate uh, files that they don't need. Mm -hmm. Things like temporary files and uh, duplicate files. So what you're seeing here is a list of some of the files that Space Wizard has found. Now, now how does Space Wizard know these are files I don't need anymore? What it does is it's looking for specific extensions um, and it doesn't actually delete them. What it does is it lists them out for the user so that the user can go ahead and decide what they want to remove either to a floppy drive or mm -hmm. to a network drive. Okay. And the main thing with this utility is it's very safe. The, the last step that you want to do is run Speed Disk. Speed Disk makes sure that your hard drive is defragmented and makes sure your computer is running at peak performance. All right, so it gets Windows 95 running at its max, and it, it gets your computer set up so it'll take care of Windows 95, huh? Exactly. Okay, that's the Norton Utilities for Windows 95. Now, there are some of you out there who just get livid with all this talk about Windows. I'm talking about the OS2 fans. It's hard to find a group of users who are more passionate about a product. So let's take a look at the newest version of IBM's OS2 called Warp. The VLSI Systems Lab at Stanford University is looking for more efficient ways to convert data into useful information. The lab's experiments involve the fabrication of very large-scale integrated circuits, work that requires designing, building, and testing new models using computers at every step. The way we use the computers in the lab is to integrate them as the controlling mechanism for our design, simulation, and testing of the constructed parts. So the computers are connected to all the instruments you can see behind me and permit us to manage the instrument and capture the data from the instrument. But the multiprogramming and multitasking that meant that the computer could be managing the flow of data to and from an instrument and running other applications at the same time was also key to the whole system being productive. The VLSI lab has been using IBM's OS2 for several years and recently graduated to the latest version called Warp. The lab's director settled on OS2 as a friendlier alternative to Unix and the newest version has features to make the system more stable and the interface easier to use. 
it is more stable than the system before. Uh, I think I feel more strongly than most people that computers ought to really work. And the fact is that when we've run uh, the lab course, the computers have run through all the lab sessions the students have never had to experience, waiting around with nothing to do while the computer gets restarted. An easy install program automatically identifies and configures the hardware to meet specifications. A toolbar called the Launchpad permits direct access to commonly used applications, folders, and printers. There's even a basic plug-and-play menu to help hapless users with problem-plagued installations. Amazingly, all this runs on less memory. IBM did something that is, is extraordinarily unusual. They really did uh, explicitly decide the next system is going to use less memory and we're just going to sit down and figure out how to do it. The system is clearly tighter and has better performance on large systems as well as small. But as I said, that discipline of sitting down and saying, this time we're going to make the software smaller is, is practically a first in the industry. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. One reason Windows has been dominating in the OS battle is the strong support of software applications developers, and that's continuing with Windows 95. It's not even out yet, but many software vendors are already poised to launch Win95 versions of their applications. We're going to show you two of them. And here to help us get started is Ted Johnson of Shapeware, the guys who make Visio. Hello, Stuart. As an applications developer, what does Windows 95 mean to you? How do you take advantage of the new operating system environment to make your application work better? Well, first step, of course, you want to get to be a 32-bit application. Take advantage of the performance improvements and reliability improvements offered in that environment. But second, and I think more important to the users, is embrace the user interface changes that Windows 95 is, is bringing out. All right, show me what you mean by that. Well, one part of Windows 95 is a change from thinking about applications to thinking about data. What you want to do rather than how to exactly. do it. Exactly. And when we install Visio, we, we include templates for a collection of different drawing types presented here with different icons and, of course, uh, long file names using uh, that feature of Windows 95. So you're really taking that Windows 95, Windows 95 paradigm and putting it inside your application. And, or even here outside the application yeah. before I've launched Visio. Right. I go in here and I say I want to do a flowchart by double clicking the flowchart icon. I come up with a collection of flowchart symbols which I can drag and drop onto my drawing page. Um, we'll make a very, very brief flowchart here. And again, it's all graphic, it's all drag and drop. Exactly. We've, appro uh, we've applied the drag and drop idea uh, in Visio uh, to graphics. Of course, we also have smart connections. You can add text to shapes very easily um, mm -hmm. and add text to connectors, as you would expect, um, and be able to do all of that uh, very, very seamlessly from within the application. All right, so what are the, some of the other things that Visio does? Ted? Well, let me use the Windows taskbar to shift back to our Visio 32 window and open up a folder where I have some drawings I created earlier. Uh, I, have a, I have a plan, I guess, maybe I'd like for my dream office. Let me just take that icon here and show you. I'll drag that right into the Visio window, mm -hmm. and Visio opens that up here, again, using uh, a capability of Windows 95 of drag and drop across applications. Um, I've always wanted an office that was large enough to fit a sofa, and I can try to drag that into the floor plan and see mm -hmm. if it works. And it, well, things look a little tight here. Maybe we'll zoom in for a slightly closer view. A little tight with this file cabinet. Let me bring that over here. I'll rotate the file cabinet, maybe drop it into the corner and say, uh, well, yeah, I think that works. Um, though I don't really like the color of that, I'll use the right mouse button to bring up a context-sensitive menu. So again, you're using right mouse button uh, capability. Again, part of the, the user interface guidelines of yeah. Windows 95. Uh, we'd expect to see these embraced by all of the applications which, which will bear the logo designed for Windows 95. Right. So again, with Visio, you can not only do the layout stuff, you can actually do the patterns and fill them in and make, do the make ugly and sofas like that. And ugly so sofas like that, and if um, you need to come in here and measure it, I mean, if you're doing a floor plan, you'd like to measure it, and you'd like to see that that, in fact, is a 15-foot office. Uh -huh. Visio has that capability, uh -huh. too. Not just simple diagrammatic type of things like flow charts, but actual measured floor plans and, and space plans, uh, such as this. Uh, again, the variety of things that Visio yeah. can do in that task-oriented view we saw earlier. All right, thanks for showing us Visio, Ted. You're welcome, Stuart. 
All right, let's take a look now at another new application which takes advantage of Windows 95, Picture Publisher 5.0. Here to help answer our questions is Craig Simmons of Micrographics. Good to be here. First question I have for you is really the same one I had for Ted. As an applications developer, how do you take advantage of Windows 95 to make your app run, run better and use that environment better? Well, again, as Ted stated, things that are important are the interface, being consistent with the user interface. And as you can see here, we have done similar things with the right mouse button for the power users. Instant access and a context sensitive tool. Also under uh, Windows 95, one of the most important things we can do for an image editing application like Picture Publisher mm -hmm. is take uh, advantage of threading. And let me to show do the multi-threading so you can really move faster in a graphics intensive application. Right. Yeah. Because one of the problems with image editors has always been bitmaps, moving pixels, right. a lot of time doing that. Productivity is one of the most important things to Picture Publisher. So this image right here, we have already uh, recorded a macro of all the commands we've applied to this image. So we'll just go ahead and activate that. Now unlike the 16-bit windows, I can click on another window and continue to work. Notice this is our task manager showing you what's... So it's still performing that other job, but you're able to move into a second task and work on it simultaneously. You betcha. So while that one's working, we're going to start creating a composite here with our object layers. We'll put a hat there. I guess it's kind of an old blue planet here. <laughs> there we go. And we'll group them together by selecting them both. Notice task manager still working in the background. Now we'll even paste in some fire because he's a real hot artist. Go to the microphone. I know it's in here somewhere. Paste that down. Now notice these are also floating objects. I can move mm -hmm. it to the back. But also notice our task manager is empty. Right. So let's click back. Look what's happened. You've done the work. Done all that work. Now I didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say, for so example... you can really do two things at once and therefore be more productive using this. You betcha. As a matter of fact, you can do more than two things at once because you can batch up these commands, uh -huh. as many as you want to. Let's say, for example, if you're a client of mine and you don't like this background, okay. one, other image editing applications, you'd have to go back and redo the whole piece of artwork. But with Picture Publisher, we have what we call the command list. Every command is stored that you've applied to the image. So what we can do is go back, all the way back to the beginning, right here to our texture fill, delete it, and reinsert a new texture fill, and we'll go ahead and apply that. Again, going off, creating another task. I can continue so working here. doing the job in the background, and you can go back and work on this job. Right. So this is, say, we're doing a two-page layout for this client. I'm continuing to work. When that's done, that will come back up to the front. We're creating that chroma mask, and it'll finish up. Now it's ready for the fill. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop in a texture fill. As you can see, texture filling. I'm always kept up on the progress with the task manager. Very important feature in Picture mm -hmm. Publisher finishes up the texture fill. Now all those other commands that created the rest of that image, we can go ahead and let it work and let's finish up this piece of artwork. Select our selector tool and move that. Now we want to drop in a little radio because it's talk radio here. <laughs> Paste. and We'll close down what we call our clipboard browser. and We're going to drop in a drop shadow just by holding down the shift key, clicking and dragging off a copy. Hmm. We'll just fill with black. Drop shadow should be that easy. Again, two tasks now simultaneously. Change the transparency, move it to the back, and we'll also notice in the background that this image is finished. Wow. So you're doing all that, all that stuff has gone on at the same time. So I mean, you really can take advantage of the multi-threading of the, of the speed and the power of this environment. That's right, and it's very easy to use, very productive, to not have to jump up to here to your menus just off your right mouse button. Also, a common look and feel feels very uh, friendly mm -hmm. to the user and something as simple as bubble hints as we call them to remind you of what your tools are. These are all kind of standard features under a Chicago or a Windows 95. What well, used to be Chicago. What well, used right. to be Chicago, Windows compatible, Windows 95 compatible yeah. app. Now you couldn't have done this under Windows 3.1? No, we actually, our 16-bit version has every feature you see here except the threading. Right. So I can't pop between different images. I'd have to batch them up at night and play them. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so that's the new picture publisher for Micrographics under Windows 95. All right, we're out of time for this week's Computer Chronicles. Remember, if you have any questions about anything you've seen on today's show, or if you'd like to suggest topics for future shows, check out our Computers on Television forum on CompuServe. The command is Go Chronicles. That's it for this week's show. I'm Stuart Chaffee. We'll see you here next time.